Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Urban Forestry Stand at Future Build. Um, and many thanks for to uh, Sue James and, and T Dag for uh, arranging all this, which is which is great. Uh, my name is Alan Simpson, and my day job is Professor of Landscape Architecture and Urban Forestry at Leeds Beckett. However, more uh, important, I think, today is the fact that I'm chair of the White Rose Forest and also chair of the Green Streets Task Group. Uh, and so today uh, I will be talking about Green Streets and what it is and perhaps the lessons that we can learn from the Leeds City region. The Leeds City region is big. It covers 10 local authorities, although Barnsley in the south is thinking of actually abandoning Leeds and going to join up with Sheffield, which is fine. Um, but um, there's about just short of 3.5 million people um, in the Leeds City region. And I must confess, a lot of my colleagues from Denmark, um, when I said, well, you do realise that in our city region we have half the population of your country. Uh, and they say, what? I say, yeah. It, uh, it is quite big. So uh, the White Rose Forest originally started off in West Yorkshire, but now covers um, the whole Leeds city region. Interestingly, people sort of think uh, a lot of countries are static at the moment in Europe as far as population goes, but it's quite interesting that, of course, in the UK we're not. If you look at the 35 years between 1970 and 2005, we expanded by just over 5 million. In the 11 years, from 05 to 16, we also expanded by uh, just over 5 million. And our population is still going to grow. Lots of our urban areas, therefore, will be increasingly uh, ethno-culturally diverse, uh, multicultural character, and going to get far more interesting, I think. And, but how will this affect, actually, the design and management of the urban forest? Um, and this is partially where Green Streets um, come in. Now, anybody who says that the camera doesn't lie doesn't understand digital photography. I have to admit that to get this slide, I did have to sort of shunt a few things together. But those buildings that you see there, those high rises, are part of 22 such buildings that were going through planning in Leeds um, in 2007. And the economic crash that happened soon after that put paid to it, and only two of them have been built. Uh, the rest never will be built. But Leeds would have started looking very different, as you can imagine, had they all been built. Um, and things were changing quite radically, and still are, really, um, in this part of the world. Now, the White Rose Forest has been actually going for quite a while. Uh, it started up in 1998 when, when NUFU, the National Urban Forestry Unit, um, tried to get and did initiate a West Yorkshire forest. Uh, it very quickly moved on uh, and the 1st of August 2000, the White Rose Forest was launched uh, and we, the then Leeds Metropolitan University, uh, chaired it, um, i.e. me. Um, and it moved on very quickly. We tried to set up and consider what legal documentation should be and took advice. And basically, a joint venture agreement was about the least problematic in terms of um, legal documents for folks to sign up to. Uh, so we set up a joint venture agreement in July 2002, and we currently have 26 signatories. Strategy was very simple, really. We wanted to work with partners across the region to assist in, in creating a healthy and prosperous and creative environmentally resilient place for people, the economy and wildlife by planting as many trees as we could. Um, we wanted to become a leader in sustainable economic development by working towards a low carbon economy in a high carbon landscape where people wanted to live and businesses wanted to invest. We wanted to very much involve local communities in the planning, design, and planting, prospective management, and recreational use of their spaces. Um, it has to be done by people who actually live with the youth, and that's important that we did that. Uh, we also wanted to promote a scale and quality of green infrastructure um, that would enhance biodiversity. 
biodiversity uh, and start thinking about the impacts of climate change uh, and what have you. Uh, 2002, it's a while ago when you think about it. As part of involving the community, um, then all our documents were written in a number of uh, languages because the, the places uh, and the urban areas already were getting very multicultural. And we used to take folks up into the core, really, the urban forest and say, hey, this is yours. This is all part of uh, your life now, very much as it is everybody else's. And it was very successful, I think. You will be very well aware of the northern forest now, which is a much more recent. Uh, and you can see from this slide the size of the White Rose Forest in terms of the size of the other community forests. Um, and uh, it's going to be a very interesting uh, development, I think. It was a bit slow to get going, but it is beginning to, to bomb ahead now. Uh, and that can be good. I don't have to tell you. Um, about the sophisticated research that has gone into urban forestry that now we know how important urban trees are and how they influence our lives in the places where we live, love, and work. Uh, uh, and you can read this as well as I. It improves our health and well-being, it improves learning for uh, children at school, increases property values, focal points to improve social cohesion, air quality, which is, which is crucial, offsetting carbon emissions, promoting biodiversity, uh, limiting flood risk, cooling our towns and cities because urban heat island issues are going to be important, hopefully promoting inward investment, uh, job creation, and retaining that because that is important. And it also makes us drive more safely. So it's an amazing, um, sophisticated um, approach to, to uh, urban spaces. As White Rose Forest, we, we have three main centres of activity, the Green Streets, uh, Landscape for Water, and Landscape for Learning. Uh, I could go on all day about all three, but clearly this presentation is just about Green Streets. The Green Streets partnership is fairly straightforward um, and actually involves quite a lot of people. Uh, obviously, White Rose Forest it involves the Community Forest Trust, uh, the West Yorkshire West Local Nature Partnership, Notice that's not called West Yorkshire. Um, the West Yorkshire Combined Authority, Wicca, that's nothing to do with White, which is Wicca, that is the Combined Authority. Metro, in terms of travel, all 10 local authorities, um, and the Leeds Sustainability Institute, which is part of Leeds it's University. The original approach was fairly straightforward. Um, we wanted to change the design and emphasis to see roads as streets um, and, and you start using them in, in different ways. In other words, people uh, were more important really than wheels. Uh, and it was about getting creative uh, green design solutions um, and developing high visual impact planting, particularly urban forestry, instead of the standard municipal landscaping. And that's not being rude, but, but it, it, it didn't really just want standard approaches. And involve cost-effective design um, of key transport infrastructures uh, instead of the usual off the peg solutions. Talking to engineers, of course, um, is always not easy, but sometimes even using images such as this um, and at least makes them laugh a bit and get on same side and if you're reading this sign you should be watching the road park here and you're dead meat and all, all the rest of it and said this is what what we're really looking for is this can't we actually start thinking a little bit more creatively um doesn't always work the first thing very often that counselors wanted to know let alone other professions is yeah great idea but uh, has it been tried before uh, and if the answer is no right next Yes, it has. Oh, did it work? Uh, what were the costs? Were there any significant management implications? And what's the economic added value? In other words, how many jobs will it create? Will it retain? So we did have to do quite a bit of work um, and, and in get involved with um, economists 
admittedly though, working initially with, with the high risk guys was a little bit like working with these folks. But it did move on and we did get quite a lot of work done on actually how many jobs it would actually create. Um, I can't pretend that uh, I could work all this out. We did have to use um, economists to actually do all the work. But it did start getting people thinking that, wow, this could be quite good. So we pursued it. And we showed that a lot of research had shown that uh, if we had a 10-year program, it doesn't really matter, but a fairly long-term investment program in, in transport, it would help to create and sustain a number of new jobs. It would enable new and existing businesses to be more efficient. In other words, it reduce commuting time, easily expand workforces, easier commuting, and encourage and facilitate cross-boundary commuting. One of the problems um, of somewhere like a post-industrial area like the Leeds City region is, and you find this all over the country, is that people are very loyal to where they live, or where the mine used to be or whatever it was. They all drink at that pub. That one 500 metres down the road, no, no, that was a different, that was a different mine. We don't go there. And people would be unemployed in a small town and there would be jobs going in the town five, six, whatever miles away, but they wouldn't go there <clears throat> because that was, was not part of, of, of the place they knew. So trying to get commuting going um, was very much part of, of, of Green Street. And initially it was about bus lanes, um, and as you can see on the image on the right, um, we actually tried and, and succeeded in getting um, green walls going well. Uh, and a lot of work was done on getting bus priority corridors so that green streets and public transport um, sort of went hand in glove. Some of the planting was, was um, perhaps not quite as radical as it could have been, but it did start getting trees around. Um, but you could argue that a lot of the design was fairly predictable um, in the early stages. Um, perhaps not quite as radical as forward thinking uh, as we need it to be. Um, the locations for the green streets um, were really initially in the growth areas, so the Bradford, um, Leeds and Castlewood as you can see, um, um, but there were schemes going on really um, all over, um, the, 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 certainly the, the southern part of the city region, which is really where most of the post-industrial um, places were. Things started getting a bit more sophisticated, however, um, because more research is done and we can start proving how important it is to get trees for all sorts of, of reasons, um, particularly in streets and, and in the cities. And this started changing the emphasis, many ways, of, of, of these streets. Um, and also finding other things. Of course, you talk about retro fitting existing areas, oh, you can't do that, there isn't space and what have you. But one of the inspirations was a, a place called Utley, which is just on the edge of, of, of Keithley uh, in Yorkshire. And you come across the streets like this, and you think, wow, hey, now this hasn't just been done now, it's been done for some years. And it's true that they are fairly low income areas, so everybody hasn't got two cars. but once you start looking at streets like that, you think, ah, proper green streets, yes, we can really start doing that. We also got involved in Bradford, in, in Manningham, uh, to work um, with the Islamic community. Uh, and I have to admit, as soon as we were asked to do that, I got a whole, got hold of a copy of Musselman's book, the, the, the plants, the Bible and the Quran, and read it and thought, yeah, yeah, it's all going to be about species. And I couldn't have been more wrong. Uh, it was about colour. Uh, and the colour blue um, scores well um, in the Quran. And if you go to the several streets, still there in Manningham, where um, all the metalwork and all of it is blue. And of course, the folks who live there said, yeah, these are our streets now. These are us. So again, Green Street started thinking, hmm, we actually have to start working quite differently in different community groups and different ethnic groups and what have you and just 
one size fits all. Uh, this isn't true. We also started looking at green ways and making a much more um, almost green infrastructure way of, of looking at green streets and thinking it's not just about street, is it? Uh, and started doing work at this sort of scale, uh, which is, is not detailed scale, but it helps politically to, to, to be looking at that scale. And in the natural choice, which came out in 2011 um, from the government uh, at the time, um, the work that we did was deemed to be trailblazing, which was very good. And the launch of the Green Infrastructure Partnership, the, the photograph on the cover, which you see on the right there, um, is actually uh, Leeds City Region. So things were moving on um, quite nicely. So we had to revise, in many ways, the concept of green streets, that it was part of a much wider green infrastructure program. Now we call it critical infrastructure, of course. It's tied to the major changes to project financing and delivering through the government's localism agenda. And the lead city region started putting a serious amount of money um, into the transport funds. But at the same time, they acknowledged that it wasn't just about keeping it to specific streets. It was a, it was a much wider agenda. And we uh, report as a project to the Local Enterprise Partnerships Green Economy Panel. Uh, and now green streets obviously are include uh, street trees, right tree in the right place, in the right way, for the right reasons. Lots of other tree planting, rain gardens, green roofs and walls, urban orchards, um, which again is a very useful thing to use in Islamic areas because the ladies um, can come out and, and work in, in orchards. Again, they get full marks in the ground for doing that. Natural habitats, greenways, it's a much, much broader object um, than it was. But the key issue, inevitably, is the quality of the planting. And Leeds City Council, just to pick as an example, their standard highway pit, if you were lucky, was a cubic metre of soil. Uh, and everybody is well aware of the fact that that really is not a good enough way uh, of doing things. Trees need soil. And if they don't have it, um, then sooner or later um, we're going to pay the price for that. And so the very first tree, really, that, that Leeds said, OK, how do we do it? Uh, so it was using silver cells, yes, OK. Um, it was in Dalton Square in Leeds, and the tree has got 28 cubic metres of, of uncompacted lawn soil. Um, quite a large semi-mature uh, plane tree, yeah, uh, and it was quite heavy, fully irrigated, uh, and it worked extremely well. Uh, politically, it, it scored almost straight away. The tree thrives. Uh, yes, it did have to be um, irrigated quite a lot to get it going there, but little cafes opened up around that square and all of a sudden even politicians were saying, hmm, yes, so this is very valuable. This is Green Street. The other thing that was very useful working with engineers and others is to do reversible schemes. They would get a little bit windy sometimes if you say, well, we ought to do this. Mm, yeah. So Leeds started putting up pop-up parks, artificial grass, obviously. Uh, the street would be closed um, and for a week, a fortnight, in summer usually, um, it, was, it was turned into a pop-up park and a little um, coffee thing in the corner. And they were extremely popular. It went down very well, and again, politically, um, it, uh, it scored highly. Also, design was the first uh, square, really, that uh, Leeds had done for a long time. But again, it's all part of the street. It's all part of, of people moving around. Um, and it uh, started people thinking quite um, creatively. Sovereign Square, it, it's south um, of the city centre. Uh, and interestingly, um, it was related to the fact that KPMG, the International 
uh, finance folks um, were opening a new building. And you can see it in the background there. And KPMG had published a report, they do it every year, uh, on where to invest. And it was back in 2002 that they looked at 64 towns and cities in Europe, and Telford Newtown came out top. And of course, everyone said, no, I think you've got that wrong, mate. It's a new town. And KPMG said, well, yes, but just short of 40% of all the investment from Japan is in Telford. Uh, well, we asked them why. They said the skills are here, the communication is good. Oh, the quality of the environment. Uh, and even KPMG said, that isn't really a reason for investing. And the Japanese folks said, uh, actually, it comes as number one. And so that changed KPMG. And they, uh, I don't think I'm letting the cat out of the bag to say that they actually fund um, half of the development um, of the square. And had a, a huge rage, rain garden. Uh, that little kid isn't about to commit harikari the water. He's about 50 mil deep. And it was designed very much to encourage kids to actually play in the water. Um, and it is a very successful space. Interestingly, uh, a lot of the trees there, are, again, are all in, in, in strata cells. Um, they all have a minimum of 25 cubic meters. And all the trees are doing um, extremely well. Bond Court, also in Leeds, um, had existing trees. They weren't doing very well, so all started again. Um, strata cells were put in. And it was now the norm, uh, and it still is the norm, for even highway engineers to say, if we're planting trees in the streets, they've got to have 25 cubic meters minimum of root of area. Uh, and this has changed things quite dramatically. And I think it's one of the great things that, that the Green Street Project has uh, managed to get uh, taken as, as now the norm. Other things came along. Um, the new urban agenda that was published by um, the United Nations um, really started looking at some of the new thinking that we've got to do to make sure that our urban areas work. And obviously, this isn't a venue to go through that in, in detail. But it agreed that urban forestry can help to deliver that new urban agenda. So when we fed that again into the arguments about green streets, people sort of said, mm, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. So we were changing the design emphasis to see roads as streets um, and centers for communities where social interaction happens. Um, and it's important that we, that we remember that and design accordingly. Creative green design solutions to uh, address engineering issues are important, rain gardens and all the rest of it. Um, high visual impact planting instead of, should we say, the less um, impact municipal planting. Um, and cost effective design of, of, of key transport infrastructure routes instead of standard pay solutions. Not all brilliant, um, but you can start seeing that some of the design, and a lot of this is actually done by highway engineers, and you can see the amount of tree planting that is beginning to be accepted um, as critical to actually deliver the, the, the quality that everybody needs. And that really was the key issue. We're all interested, all professions, all politicians, all communities are interested in success. And to get success, we actually have to start working together. Um, and working with the communities and trying to get separate um, cycle routes. Why did anyone want to cycle down a sort of well, less than a meter side of a, a busy road when you're inhaling all that stuff? No, let's actually get cycleways away from there um, and share pedestrian, possibly even equestrian routes um, are just as important to do. Community support does aid consultation processes. Um, we've even started thinking about putting in um, green bridges. Um, to my knowledge, in the Netherlands and part of Belgium, not having that area, there are over 600 green bridges. We have, what, three in this country? 
um, something that we've got to start thinking about if we want green infrastructure to carry on um, across roads, railways, and all the rest of it. Um, why not do little pocket parks um, adjacent to where people are? So that can be all part of the good streets, all part of the highway. A lot of work beginning to be done in the center of Leeds now, as with other cities as well. On the left is what it looks like. Um, and that's slightly uh, interesting one, because sometimes you can have anywhere up to 10 um, double-decker buses there, which is a bit like Berlin revisited. Um, but on the right is the way that started thinking of going. Um, again, existing new public gateway or tree. Um, you may remember that pop-up park um, slide earlier on. Um, this is actually Cookridge Street, which is where it takes place. It isn't grass. There's still going to be a cycleway down the middle of it, but it is going to be pedestrianised, and that, that project is actually on the, on the ground at the moment. Um, and at long last, we're beginning to get the streets um, that we want. Hedrow is one of the main east-west roads in the centre of the city of Leeds. Again, that's on the ground at the moment now, a um, multi-million pound scheme. Uh, and as you can see, a lot of schemes are now beginning to get on the ground of a much more sophisticated approach to um, Green Street. Change really is now the norm. Uh, almost anything can happen. Uh, technologically, um, ecosystems, politics, economies, our habits, everything uh, is, is changing. Some positive is good, some less good. Um, but we've got to start working with this. And it isn't just a question of best practice. It's what might next practice be. And when we held the first World Forum on Urban Forestry um, back uh, in, in November of, of uh, 2018, um, in Italy, we uh, wrote a call for action. Um, and again, I could spend a lot of time on that, but I'm not going to. Um, but it was all about the fact, really, that, that urban forestry and design of places should be greener and healthier and happier, cooler, wilder, cleaner, wealthier and safer. And urban forestry is in the centre of being able to achieve that. The other thing that we've started promoting um, and have done for a while, I guess, is the fact that green streets and reconcil reconciliation ecology is, is important. It's encouraging biodiversity in our human-dominated ecosystems. Cities really have got to step up to the plate and engage with natural processes um, and allow um, migration of species because of climate change. Um, and this is already happening. And we've managed to sell the idea to, to our let really, that in the last major change of climate after the Ice Age, the ice retreated northwards and species followed up. And that wasn't a problem. Um, there is a problem now, of course, because there are cities in the way. So how do we actually help um, nature, natural processes to start migrating um, into different areas as it, it already is well underway because of climate change? Uh, and clearly, cities have got to help. They've got to provide stepping stones. They've got to start planting the right species. Do we do assisted migration? Um, and again, this is very much part of what the streets um, is all about. The other interesting thing, of course, is soil. And quite a lot of other cities, certainly in Europe, are beginning to not plant, or not use perhaps quite as much strata cell and similar stuff under the ground, even though the plastic is, um, had been used, it is being recycled. Um, but they're actually beginning to say, let's try and start getting soil back in our streets and actually start planting. And if you go to Malmo, which if you haven't been, I suggest that you do, because the mayor there uh, is an amazing bloke, young bloke, of course, new generation. Uh, and so many of the roads now and the streets are like on the right-hand side of that slide there. You'll see rain gardens, um, curbs have gone, 
uh, water just goes off uh, and there's no big issue with drains at all. Uh, we have managed to start doing that in, in some little places around here and started planting trees. It's skipped and very small, but no, it's got a spot somewhere. Uh, and it's interesting, the living with beauty um, thing that came out um, in January of this year uh, really does cover an awful lot in Section 11 on nature and re-greening our towns and cities um, is a very good read and really does, I think, promote the idea of, of, of green streets. And again, <laughs> yes, these little cartoons quite be interesting, but up until relatively recently, designing the city's been like the little sketch at the top. Everyone's been pulling in different directions, and the results have not been good. A lot of the things that we promised as urban designers in the 1980s and the 1990s just have not come to fruition. So we've actually got to start thinking far more creatively, and that's what I think the Green Streets project is doing. And we've got to start working as we're doing in the little bottom sketch. We've all got to start pulling in the same direction because we all have a vested interest in success, whoever we are. And I think as urban foresters, we should remember that actually it's not predetermined the future. Um, uh, it, it's uh, not come down from Mount Ararat with Moses or anybody else. We are creating the future. And the paths there are not to be found, but we're making them. And the very activity actually makes changes to both the makers and the destinations. So as I've said, even the, the concept of Green Street changed um, as we pursued it um, over, over the years. And Green Street's partnership be very much um, subscribed to this point of view. So, to conclude. We do need far better transdisciplinary design, and that can significantly improve the quality of the resilience of our towns and our cities and our city regions, including our streets and our urban forests, to create a far better, more viable urban habitats than now exist, without just copying nature. Cities are not nature. They've got to incorporate it, but it is going to be different. We have got to plant more trees to connect our city regions to the right tree in the right place for the right reasons, I would love to start planting as part of the North Forest and bring forests around all our major towns and cities, as Beijing has done. You may well know that between 2015 and 2017, three years, Beijing planted 54 million trees um, in the ring around that city. Um, we think of the Northern Forest, we're going to plant 50 million in 25 years. Uh, they did it in three were thought. Um, but we must believe in the value and importance of our plural and multicultural city regions. It is the nucleus of our culture. Um, we are actually sociable people. People like living in cities, but they've got to be good. Um, and green streets and the forest, urban forest really can help to do that. We're not just doing it for these poor old sedentary folks who actually get out there and oh dear, need a kip. Um, yes, it is for them, but isn't it really for these folks? Um, it's for the next generation and the generation after that. Uh, and it's those generations that at the moment we're not providing for, I think, in as creative of a way as we should be. Um, and that really is what the Green Streets Project um, is all about. Uh, so if you have been, thank you for listening.